You monster. You've promised me everything. You promised me the connectivity. You've promised me that I will be able to do everything with you. But no, you refuse. You only connect to Ewelink up. And even if I open up your heart, I just can't get through you. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. This is Son of Duel R2. Now, one of the biggest advantages of Son of uh, um, devices is that I actually they quite open about how to hack them, how to flash the custom firmware, and you don't have to use Ewelink app to control them. You can hook it up to a uh, Node-RED or you can use it with Home Assistant. There is a plenty of different options that you can control your Son of device once flashed. But what if it's not flashed. If you're lucky, you have R3 devices that come with DIY mode and you can use that instead. Now, I've talked about DIY mode and its shortcomings here, but today I'm going to talk about something pretty exciting because I've not come across that before. I'm talking about Ewelink API. That's right, Ewelink has API. Granted, this is not a consumer API, so that's something you would see on, like, on Shelly devices, but it is there for developers to use, which means a couple of smart people already figure out that they can use this to integrate Ewelink products into Node-RED or Home Assistant. So what does it mean? It means that if you got yourself in a pickle by buying a product like this that is not flashable, not uh, hackable, and is just a link to the Ewelink app, you will be still able to control it uh, via Node-RED, Home Assistant, uh, smart speakers, or the app itself. So, okay, all pretty. Let's talk about the trade-offs. First of all, you are using Ewelink server, so you are still connected to Ewelink. I know if you were hoping to get cut off from any Chinese servers and you're paranoid about your privacy, then you're probably better off with Son of Products Flash with Tesmota. But if you have an Ewelink products that you would like to retain the functionality of Ewelink app, then you can still integrate it with your Node-RED or Home Assistant. Now, the caveat is that you will be logged out from the app. You can only be logged in uh, from a single instant. So it's going to be either your Node-RED server or your Ewelink app. Now, to bypass it, I would suggest you to create a second account. Now, on this account, you would share all the devices between the accounts. You can control it with a different out, uh, app being logged in. That way, you can be logged into one session using Node-RED and the second session using your phone and, well, take advantage of best words. Now, the second caveat is the LAN mode. Although it is available in Ewelink app itself, it doesn't work. Unfortunately, as soon as I blocked access uh, to the internet from outside to my uh, Ewelink device, the device become unresponsive and I could not connect to it uh, via Node-RED. It's unfortunate, but I hope in the future that will change. So I'm wondering, the whole thing is quite fresh because the node itself is only a couple of months old and I've not come across that Ewelink API before. So if a couple of months ago we didn't have anything like that and now we have an API to work with, maybe if there is enough interest, uh, Ewelink is going to be kind enough to provide us with consumer grade API with proper token authentication so you could control your uh, Sonos devices or Ewelink devices without actually hacking it. So this is API for developers and I've linked that in the article uh, link to this video in the description so you can take a look and have an overview. But what's more important is that actually some people already took advantage of that and introduced Ewelink app or Ewelink node which you can install now via Palet Manager. How it works is uh, you connect your credentials from Ewelink app and you use that using Ewelink devices. Now, this will need your um, email, your password and the region. Now, the region was a little bit complicated. I figured out that for US, you have to put e US uh, lowercase and for uh, UK, I would have to use EU for European Union. So stick your credentials in here. 
No, you're going to be logged out from the evil link up on your phone. So that's a, um, obviously a disadvantage, but you can bypass this by actually um, sharing the devices with another account and using two accounts. I don't know whether that's going to get fixed or whether we're going to have uh, more than one session. Well, that's the uh, limitation for now. Once you've got everything set, all you have to do is just uh, go to the evil link devices and populate uh, the debug with devices. Every device is going to have its own object. And in here, I've got my unfortunate unbranded son of, and you are most interested in device ID. This device ID will specify uh, which device you want to control in different nodes. So take a note on that. You're going to find a lot of information in here. So feel free to browse. You will be able to control your device using the power state uh, in this case, because I'm using a switch. So I have my power state uh, node in here and I've named it. I've assigned the ID and my channel and the credentials. Now it does take a uh, payload, a string, which is toggle on and off. Unfortunately, it doesn't support true or false or one or zero. And then you'll be able to control this uh, using this command. So if I'm gonna toggle it, you'll see that the device will display the confirmation that it toggled the lamp on. The lamp is right now on. If I'm gonna take it off, uh, it's gonna update within a second. And in my update, I will see that the light is off. Now, if you want to monitor switching from external source, you can also use the event listener. It will listen to either all devices if you don't specify the ID, or if you specify the ID, you'll uh, listen to a specific device. So this is how you interact. It. It's very simple and you have a couple of different nodes to receive information about the power usage, about the temperature, humidity, etc. One more closing thought. Will I stop flashing Tasmota? Probably not, because it's fun and Tasmota comes with extra features that are not possible right now with Evilink app. However, it's a perfect opportunity for anyone that owns Evilink device that are either they don't want to flash it or they are unable to flash it because of the architecture of the hardware. So in the comments to this video, guys, do let me know what Ewing devices you do have that you haven't flashed and why you wouldn't do so and whether you would take advantage of that Ewing API and how would you do it? What would be your favorite features? I'll be definitely exploring this a little bit more and I'll try to get in touch with Ewing to find out what they are up to. So. If you fancy some updates on this, uh, do follow me on social media because this is the best way to keep updated with my content. And obviously you know how YouTube works, I don't have to teach you all that. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye!